Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and I'm here playing three different horror games from that PS1 Game Jam horror game. This kind of rounds out some of the other ones I thought were a little bit interesting looking. Um, the first of which here is number 94. This one is specifically from the creator of First Winter, which was a kind of cool Cold War era horror game I played in the past. And this game is described as a kind of experimental, kind of short horror experience. Okay. We are officially in the world of number 94. It is a void. Clearly we're at the bottom of a trash can where my soul resides. Was it sonar? <laughs> it makes sense considering first winter. I think it's picking up, yeah. So we're doing the right thing, I think. Let's just get away from the noise. Are we sure? Hmm. Low. Right here, maybe? Guy's like searching around the dark. But it's not dark whatsoever. It's more to the left. To the right. It's gotta be right here. It's towards this general direction right here. This way. Maybe it is shifting and it's not just a straight route. This way. Hey, there it is. I feel like an animal. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that's your first instinct, right? You hit the button, didn't do anything, hit it again. Third time's a charm. Fourth. That's weird. Oh, another button. Uh, okay. Congratulations, we've entered a room. Very spacious, nice coloring. Experimental. So it's definitely a senses game. So first was sound, now is sight. There we go. I think he I think he did some tricks in the the Cold War horror game that you like this a little bit. Useless. Oh he carries a key. A button? <laughs> That's it. Okay. So, quick interesting concept. I think, I think I said, I'm 100% sure he did some things like this in First Winter. Not as advanced, so. Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass here, and welcome. And welcome to Frontier Diver. A PS1 game jam horror game that is basically a submarine simulator. And as you always know, the deep sea is a fun place to be. Ah, uh, yes. 
the sea. A most wonderful, imaginative place. Huh, I got a ping back. So now we're at the surface. Let's start descending a little bit. We have our bearings. Now, can we go forward? Or is this a dead end? I can't tell by this hyper realistic pop in. It is extremely authentic to a fault. Huh. Is there another water over there? Water base? I'm going to tell you what this reminds me of. There was a... I think it was a couple of PS1 submarine games. Um, but specifically, for some reason, the original Final Fantasy VII, the, the submarine sections. Where emerald weapons, like, going around and kind of scary. Now, will emerald weapon appear here? I hope not. But so far, things are... peaceful. Huh, something down there. Descend. A little weird, right? And what's that supposed to be? There's little floating things, too. I would assume they're mines, but they don't quite look like it. Let's descend a little closer. Um, they look more like flying flesh. I think I'm gonna avoid that. Distance is 78 meters. Oh boy, that is the abyss right there. Well, let's go. See something over there. A floating rail car? <laughs> Looks like the remains of more structures. Let's see what we got here. Fairly deep, getting fairly dark. Let's see more of these floating things, I think. Those don't look like normal sea life. And... This definitely... Does not look like normal sea life. Ooh. The only way we can go is go down. Because we're smart. Yeah, of course you want to, like, dim the lights ever. <laughs> no. Unless there's a strategy to that. Let's slow down our descent.
I'm going to find my tape. Is this... Is this... A, how do I know this isn't just a giant mouth or something? Going to grit Jabu Jabu's belly. I'm getting a lot deeper. It's getting darker. Ah, yes. The beauty of the sea. Look how the flesh falls. Glisten in the dim lights. No, we're getting even deeper. We're fine. We're fine. It's cool. No leaks here. We're good. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, we're not getting anything on the radar. Well, the sonar, anyway. How deep does this go? Even deeper, apparently. So you go down 2,000 meters? And let's pick up the speed a little bit. Not too fast, I don't want to smack dab into something. I think we're seeing some changes, right? It's looking a little more red on the walls. Oh look, we got something. And I think I see something down there. Like the silhouette at the end is kind of changing. Yes, I see something. Uh oh, slow the speed, slow the speed. What is that? Human faces? More of these flowing things. I don't even begin to know what this thing is. It looks kind of like a certain enemy from Zelda. Let's slow this in even more. Bring it to neutral. It's not attacking me. Well, it looks weird. It has, it has hands. It's, it's like a human sea anemone. ID progen. Regenerator? I went to my pilot into it. Is it peaceful? I guess so. Well, let's leave. Goodbye. Friend. It looks like it's staring at me as I leave. Like, hey, don't go. Hey! 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 Off the ship! We're going down! Why did we decide to go where no man was supposed to go? Free falling. Mayday.
Take out water. Oh, I guess that was it for Frontier Diver. So, short game jam horror game. Uh, I like the idea of using the, the retro style in the draw distance for an underwater horror game. Uh, I, I think it would be interesting as a full game, not just kind of like a proof of concept. So, I know I know Subnautica could exist and everything, and Subnautica is very good, but, you know, it's, it's... For most instances, it's pretty perfect. Uh, but this one... One that's just kind of focused on the exploration horror would be interesting, not the survival part. Because the graphical style does work for it. Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to the Graveyard Shift. A PS1 style horror game, part of the same game jam I've been playing games from. This game is from the creator of Killer Bees, which I've actually played in the past. And it's about a game that involves a graveyard shift in more ways than one. Oh boy, just what I love. Phone noises. Who would call that late? It's probably Gus. What, am I living in some kind of JPEG artifact from the 56k era? Better get to work. Oh my god. <laughs> Everything's so low quality. I know it's on purpose, but it's painful in the eyes. Killer bees. I move the boxes to the front, the delivery truck will be here in a few hours. So this is like kinda like um We've been playing a lot of convenience store games lately. But this is a, uh, decently sized, little grocer. Box. This is the PS1 horror game demo disc. Oh yeah, box movement simulator. Can I stack multiple boxes? And they get thrifty? We can do this, come on. No, it doesn't doesn't quite work. Hey, meat. I figure out like what he means by like the front. Is this the front? I guess. I mean, I'm just gonna move all the boxes there, and if it is in the right place, I'll just adjust it. It won't be in the right kind of. God, we suck at throwing boxes. What do we pay you for? Throwing boxes? Prospects in life get stuck in the JPEG hell. But at least it's not Walmart. Then again, the pay's no good, non existent. Bam. Oh yeah, we're stacking them boxes up. We're working. We're doing our job. 
Nothing, nothing I love more. Stacking boxes in a singular place. All the joys of doing a menial work task at a place that's not work, at home, in my comfy chair. Which is that not that comfy? My chair is kind of worn out. Yep, nothing. Nothing I like more. Oh my god, there's so many boxes. So many boxes. Why do I have to stack every single one? Oh my god. What was that noise? Stuff in the storage room would have fallen apart. I must have left a door open or something. Still gotta check this out. Press E near the door to open it. Alright, I'm opening the door. There is blood on the floor. Don't worry about that. So we got a little too heavy into the uh, Mario Party 1. Not 2, not 3, not 6. Mario Party 1. And some, you know, some thumbs might be dead. My blood on the floor. You need nothing to worry. Where's Gus? What happened to Gus? I have to call the cops. Why do we care about Gus so much? Call the cops. Or like, call myself out of here and run. Our boss's office. He comes here only every Monday. I haven't entered here once. Uh, cutscene? I don't think it's a good idea to go back to the alley this late. Interesting it's a cutscene and not a text that appears when I approach the door. Hmm. I think Killer Bees had this really kind of like JPEG artifacting filter. It's like trying to play an old game on a modern HDMI TV without the proper like upscale converters. Frack! The deadline is completely dead. I'll have to go find him alone. What was it in Battlestar Galactica? When they like, like frack? Now I can go out. Pumpkin King? So what the big twist of graveyard shift is gonna be? Fire over there. But I don't go where there's fire. I go the opposite direction, hope I found some kind of optional secret, then go back for the fire. Then I turn around, because it's a misty alleyway and Jack the Ripper is gonna be down there. No, not the classical one from London. The one from Faith Go. Or Faith Apocrypha, depending what you prefer. Gus? Hey, stop! Have you seen a man around here? It's urgent. Is this even a person? It's alive! It's gonna consume us all! Quit everything! Doomsday's upon us! You have to help me! Please give me some money! I wanna stay alive to see this! It's me who will guide the flock! I've given everything up for him! He owes me! Sure. I heard a man scream not too long ago. He's down below now. No doubt. God. 
the uh, resolution on the um, textures is so low, you can't even tell it's like a sleeping hobo. open. Is Gus Hatchew down there? I sure hope our man Gus isn't down that hole. I hope he's okay. It would kind of make it a literal man hole. Alright, that's a dead end. I don't understand. Something is attracting me here. This feels like home. Weird. Convenient flashlight turned on. Bones. I don't find this very humorous. Okay, there's more than one bone. On one hand, that means Gus could still be alive. On the other, it means... There's at least two bones worth of people down here. Loop it in on itself, or it's just no, it's just that convoluted. Oh boy. So we've gone from stacking boxes to wandering around in sewer mazes. And this is still better than working minimum wage. Hey, three skulls. Four skull. Useless. One. Useless. 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 Useful. Or is it? Okay, no, yeah. It works. My god. Own statues. Places never been heard of before. The mortals weren't supposed to roam. A world forgotten. The weird elder god from eternal darkness. Who lights up above? I didn't be looking for Gus lead to this. Oh, there's people in it. Look at the texture. It's Legion from Castlevania. Now the um the towel screen makes sense. See the the background? So that's it for Graveyard Shift. 
I guess in the ending, going based on the the description of the game, which says, Those who stray away from the faith must be punished and become one of the beasts. Only those who understand what's to come of flourish on a dead corpse of society. Um, you essentially became one of the Legion from Castlevania. Um, Legion obviously is also a concept from, you know, like, it's not just a game video game villain or anything like that. Legion is an actual thing. So a little bit of a mix of that and the actual religious figure. So I like where this one was going. It kind of dragged with the sewer maze, for one. It's nothing really goes down there. I feel like, kind of like padding to increase the, the value of the game, per se, due to the short nature of game jams and how they're usually walking simulators. Because you can't really make too much of a death of the game during a game jam, because you only get like two days to make it. But I would have liked to have seen some a little more foreshadowing in that time frame leading up to the big reveal of the Legion. That, that would have added some more creepiness. But yeah, I mean, it's alright. Anyway, so thank you all for watching me play these three different horror games. I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.